issues that were addressed and raised by the government spokesperson, uh, Mr. Isaac Mwaura, on the 31st of May 2024, when he was addressing a press briefing, and uh, it concerns the benefits of the retired president. Now, you've been given a press kit. A press kit will be going around right now. And uh, in the press kit, there are documents that I will be speaking to as I address the issue. I will first uh, try to respond to the question, to the issue that were raised by the government spokesperson, and then I will present the official position of the office. And I hope that's okay. So, in his statement, Mr. Bora indicated that the former president Uhuru Mwegai Kenyatta received a lump sum payment of 48 million shillings, or 48 million shillings, as gratuity. I would like to confirm that that is correct, that he did receive the lump sum, but I also want to emphasize that gratuity is an entitlement accorded to every public officer on the expiry of service or once their contract is done. And just to give but an example of a few is the former chief of chief justices, all former members of cabinet, um, commanders of uh, defense forces, that is CDFs, including the then deputy president. He also received a gratuity and including myself as a former spokesperson of State House. It is true that the former president is receiving his personal monthly allowances that are paid by the pension fund that is domiciled at Treasury, and he also has the medical cover. Now, on the issue of, retired president, of the retired president enjoying a fully furnished and maintained office space, as alluded to in the statement, this took us by surprise. <laughs> Because it is public knowledge that State House has been very clear on the position of the office in Nyari as the only office that the president should use based on the fact that the office has been bought by government. A position that was clearly articulated by the State House spokesperson, Hussein Mohammed, during a question and answer session uh, when he was doing the press briefing of President Trudeau's visit to the United States of America. So the statement that the former president enjoys a fully furnished and maintained office of his choice provided by government is incorrect. To date, the office matter has never been addressed and has never been resolved. But I'd however want to note, and I'd like you to note that the office in Nyari was selected by the former president, the late former president Mwai Kibaki, suitable for himself. Just a note that I'd like you to take. Then I would like to confirm also that the office confirms that uh, the former president was indeed allocated vehicles of, for his personal use, and that is the two Toyota Land Cruisers, like stated in the statement, one Mercedes-Benz and one Range Rover that is in use by the former First Lady Mama Margaret Kenyatta. The four Toyota Prados that have been mentioned are in use as follows. Three are used by the security detail that was given to the president, the former president, and one Toyota Prado that is being used by the office, as well as one Subaru Forester. Now, what the government spokesperson did not clarify is that the vehicles allocated to the former president for personal use were not new. They were, in fact, the cars that were part of his motorcade when he left Kasarani during the inauguration ceremony. And this was agreed upon by State House that the former president uses these vehicles on transitional basis as, it, as they begin the process of procuring new vehicles as stipulated in the Presidential Benefits Act. That is, two new vehicles of the retired president's choice, replaceable every three years, and each car having an engine capacity not exceeding 3,000 cc's. A two four-wheel drive motor vehicle, two four-wheel motor drive vehicles of the retired president's choice, also replaceable every three years each vehicle having an engine capacity of 3,000 to 4,000 cc's. Just a point of note as well. The late President Daniel Arap Moy and the late President Mwai Kibaki were allocated and maintained more than double the number of vehicles that have been allocated to the third retired president to ensure optimum running of his office. There were fuel cards that were issued, and the fuel cards were given as well as the maintenance of the vehicles, but that has not been done because the cards were blocked on the, in the month of March 2023 to, 3rd, to, the 20, to date, that is. I'll take that again. The fewer cards were given, however, they were cancelled and blocked by State House since March 2023 to date. There have been reports on some local dailies 
that uh, stating that State House has undertaken repairs and maintenance of vehicles under the former president's office. That is incorrect. In fact, I want to say that I did receive calls from some journalists to verify incomplete forms provided by a State House official as evidence of services rendered towards repairs and maintenance. And despite my clarification, they still went ahead to quote these as valid documents of services rendered. And those copies of those incomplete forms you have in your press pack, uh, you'll be able to peruse that. These forms, you'll see that they have the word approved at the corner, which is what was being used by State House to say that they have approved the services. That signature, I would like to clarify, ladies and gentlemen, belongs to the former State House Comptroller, that is Mr. Kino the Ambogwa, who is currently the AIE holder of the office of the third retired president. And those forms, or those requisitions, were not honored by the accounting officer, who is our accounting officer, that is the State House Comptroller. A complete requisition forms, just for your note, contains signatures and approval notes from heads of department. It is therefore the position of the office of the third retired president that the government of the day has not undertaken, nor facilitated any repairs, maintenance of any vehicles under this office, neither have they fueled any cars under this office. As I finalize on the issue raised in the matter by the government spokesperson, the office still awaits the confirmation and communication on why they blatantly refuse to renew contracts of two professional staff members, the administrator, Mr. George Karioki, and Mrs. Kanze Dena Mararo, who is the director of communication. There is also the issue of unceremonious withdrawal and intimidation of staff via phone calls at midnight. We have provided a list of the complete staff serving in the office of the retired third president and would also like to clarify that the list that Mr. Maura presented in his statement had the wrong tally. Those members of staff that were there were 32 and not 33 when the act provides for 34 members of staff. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to present the official position of the office of the third retired president of the Republic of Kenya. On the issue of the office, before retirement and during his retirement, the former President Kenyatta has been sought to undertake various international roles, especially within the region, in his capacity as a former head of state. And among them was his appointment as a peace facilitator by the East African Community Heads of State during the 22nd Ordinary Meeting of East Africa Heads of State Summit that was held on the 22nd of July 2022 in Tanzania, Arusha. These engagements necessitated that the need to identify and establish a suitable office for the former president to enable him carry out these roles and provide an operational base for various cadre of staff. Now, with no response from State House and a lack of commitment to finalize on the issue of the office space, His Excellency, the former president, identified a suitable office space, as you can see where we are, and went ahead to fully furnish and equip it from his pocket. A formal letter was written to State House requesting valuation of the, of the office that was identified by the former President Kenyatta as suitable for him to carry out his duties. However, the office did not receive a response on the issue, and instead, the communication that the office received was via communication, was via message, text message, by the then in charge, Mr. John, uh, John Makumi. And in his statement, he indicated the estimates of the property in question where we are, and that is the office that was selected by the former president. In your communication pack or in your press kit, you will find the communication that alludes to this statement. To date, this office runs on the former president's goodwill as it waits upon action from State House. On the issue of vehicles, as indicated earlier, the former president is using vehicles given to him on a transitional basis. The office would like this to go on record that after transition, a conversation on the purchase of vehicles as required by the Act commenced between the two offices. That conversation I have made available for you also on the kit, and it notes that the identification of vehicles was done down to the color of the vehicle, and then the conversation froze. To date, no discussions have been revived. We don't know if the cars were purchased or not. On international trips, since retirement, the former, former President Uhuru Kenyatta has undertaken several official trips related to the roles and duties he has engaged in. And only two such trips 
have been honored. The trip to Ethiopia on matters concerning the peace process led by the African Union and the one to Burundi that was the 11th summit of the heads of state and government of the East African community on the issues pertaining to the peace process in the Democratic Republic of The office did submit other requests for facilitation of trips, but received no response. That too, you'll find in your press pack. Now the budget is the fourth issue. Now this is actually the core issue that the office seeks to have addressed, budget allocation. In the year 2022-2023, financial year 2022-2023, Parliament allocated this office 655 million shillings. To date, the office can only confirm absorption of roughly 28 million shillings, spread across payment of allowances for domestic travel, as well as facilitation of the two trips that I mentioned earlier that were honored. That is approximately 4.4% of the total budget for that particular year. And this does not include the payment of salaries and medical insurance. The financial year 2023-2024 that ends in a few weeks, the budget allocation for this office was 503 million shillings. The year is ending without the office having any access to this allocation. The total amount for the two years that we have not had access to this approximately 1 billion Kenya shillings. We can confirm that salaries have been paid as well as medical insurance, but we cannot accrue, allude to how much it is. Now, in the coming year, which is 2024-2025, the budget allocation is 579 million shillings. Well, the office waits with bated breath to see if this will be honored. You see, the quagmire that this office is in is that the office cannot substantiate what has been used and where the monies have been used since several requests and attempts to get budget returns from the accounting officer, who is the State House Comptroller, have fallen on deaf ears. We would also like to distance ourselves from budget estimates tabled in Parliament. Our position is that we had no input on the budget estimates that informed the allocation of 450 million shillings that Treasury projects to allocate the office of the third retired president in the coming year of 2025-2026, which is 475, and 475 million shillings for the year 2026-2027, as was reported by the Star newspaper of the Tuesday, May 14, 2024. You see, after budget estimates are approved by Parliament, the monies are disbursed to the accounting officers through Treasury. It is at this point that our department or office is able to access the budget allocation through the accounting officer as per their requirements. And I just want to state that our accounting officer in this case is our State House Comptroller. The total cost of the plan is then submitted to Parliament as budget estimates. And BAPO, once approved, the budget allocation will be under care of the accounting officer, who then is expected to allocate the monies to the department office. This process has not happened in our case. The lack of access to our rightful budget allocation has forced the former president Uhuru Kenyatta to run the office from his pocket, paying for all the bills the office incurs. Communication. The office notes with concern the choice of communication by State House to this office. State House chooses a verbal form of communication on official issues or chooses not to respond to correspondence by this office. This includes the requisition for fuel maintenance, office operations and facilitation pending renewal of contracts and budget returns. We all know the importance of written communication in any office to maintain transparency and order. In the press kit that we have availed to you, you will see internal communication within the office to enable us account for actions taken following verbal non-committal communication from State House. We have also seen the continuous onslaught of the office on local dailies as well as leaking of misleading documents by State House, presenting the office of the third retired president in bad light to the public. It has never been the intention of this office to engage with State House via the public gallery on matters that should be handled between the two offices. The position of the office of the third retired president is a respect of institutions, and as such, has remained silent for the last two years, hoping for a formal engagement with State House. However, the continued address of the issue in the public domain 
has informed the move by this office to give a formal response on the real state of affairs. We call upon the relevant institutions led by Parliament who are mandated to uphold the rule of law and defend the Constitution, the Auditor General who is tasked to hold the government accountable in its expenditure as well as a controller of budget to look into the issues that we have raised. As an office, we are willing and ready to engage. However, it is our observation that there is a lack of commitment and reluctance by the government in fulfilling the Presidential Benefits Act in totality. Now, there was an issue that was raised in the statement about Mamangina Kenyatta. So, as pertains the Act, we all know that Her Excellency Mamangina Kenyatta, in her capacity as a former First Lady and surviving spouse of the late President Jomo Kenyatta, is entitled to benefits amounting to 50% of her husband's pension. The three Range Rovers that Her Excellency Mamangina Kenyatta has in her possession were allocated to her by the late President Daniel Arap Moy and the late President Mwai Kibaki during their respective tenures and replaced accordingly after every three years, that is. Now, clearly, the government spokesperson said that they gave her the cars, but clearly the government of the day has not provided her with any vehicles. In fact, we would like to clarify that on the 18th of July, 2023, at 7 p.m., all her drivers and security detail allocated to her were withdrawn from their residences via phone. The claims in the media that personnel were reinstated is false. To cap it all, fuel cards for her vehicles were also blocked since March 2023 to date, and vehicle maintenance denied. She fuels and maintains these government vehicles, one of which has been unserviceable for approximately over one year. We do note that there are other beneficiaries of the Presidential Retired Benefits Act, which include the former Prime Minister, Right Honorable Raila Odinga, the first retired Vice President, Honorable Moody Awori, and the second retired Vice President, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka. We also know that the, former, the, the current Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, was also a beneficiary of this office before his new role in the current government. While the picture painted by Mr. Maura of the government's commitment to support the office of the retired president in accordance to the law is the ideal situation, it saddens this office to inform the public that unfortunately that picture does not exist. And our worry as an office is a precedence that is being set by the government of the day. Their decision to blatantly ignore execution of the Presidential Act No. 11 of 2023 seems to open up a Pandora's box that will leave a retired head of state at the mercy of the government of the day. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat everywhere, whatever affects one directly or indirectly. So help us God. And we would like to clarify that this is not what we would want to happen. This is not how we would want to engage, because we, expect, we respect the rule of law. However, any matters arising, we do acknowledge that there are officers concerned, and we do hope that they will be able to pick it up and rest the issue. I conclude my statement, and now I'll, I'll uh, take in questions. Yes, sir. Yes, Justice.